Hello, you're on Pablo Spot. I'm George. Long time no see and happy new year. I hope you had a good holiday celebrations and cheers for the new year 2022. It's been at least two weeks since my last video, so I apologize for being missing in action. Having said that, I have one unfinished business, and that is to wrap up the series on exploring layers of handling web requests. And so today, I will be making changes to my CloudFront resource to point it to my load balancer. This way, I can make the necessary changes to secure my EC2 instance, which has all my web applications, and make sure that it's not accessible directly from the internet. And so if this series and the content of this channel lines up with your interest, hit the subscribe button and join me in this journey of learning by doing. So, let's start coding. Good habits need to be maintained, so I'm going to make sure that I have the latest code by running git pull on my machine. And then create a branch for my changes today. Before I start my code changes, let's draw some diagrams. So let's do a review of the evolution of my overall setup. I have an Nginx web proxy which allows access to a default Nginx web application on port 8080. And then I introduce a blogging application which is accessible on the same port but behind a URL called slash ghost. And then I added two more applications, the Sonar app and the Radar app, which are accessible via ports 8081 and 8082. I deployed all these web applications in an EC2 instance that is publicly accessible to allow users in the internet to get access to these applications. In this particular setup, my web proxy or web request forwarder is the Nginx application. This particular setup is not best practice and it makes my protection perimeter so thin making all my web applications easily vulnerable to attacks because my EC2 instance is publicly accessible. And so, I introduced the load balancer as another layer of web proxy. I made the necessary changes to allow my load balancer to connect to my EC2 instance. I also added resources to allow my load balancer to be accessible using domain-based URLs. And then I attach TLS certificates to enforce access using HTTPS. In this particular setup, I have two different levels of web proxy. One is the load balancer, and then the other one is my Nginx application. In the previous episode, I introduced CloudFront as another web proxy which goes to my publicly accessible EC2 instance. And I added resources to allow access to this CloudFront using domain-based URL. So the setup looks like this. Just like what I did with my load balancer, I attach a TLS certificate on my CloudFront resource to enforce access using HTTPS. In this particular setup, I have two web proxy. One is the CloudFront, and then the other one is the Nginx application. What I will be doing today is hook up my CloudFront resource to the load balancer. With this setup, I no longer need to have my CloudFront integrate directly to my publicly accessible EC2 instance and remove the domain-based URLs that route requests to my load balancer and then make the necessary changes to stop public access direct to my EC2 instance. So now that I have the structure of what I want to achieve for today, let's head back to my VS Code and start writing the code. The first thing that I want to do is make the changes to my EC2 Terraform module. So inside main.tf, I will update the associate public IP address property and set that to false. And then if I go down to the security group assigned to this resource, I also want to get rid of the ingress block which exposes ports 8080 to 8082 to the internet. I will need to link the security group of this EC2 instance later on to allow load balancer access. So I need to update the outputs.tf and add the security group ID. And because my EC2 instance does not have associated public IP, I no longer need to output the public DNS. So let me get rid of that. That's all the changes that I need for my EC2 Terraform module. So now on to the load balancer module. 
In order for my load balancer to gain access to my EC2 instance, I need to introduce a security group rule resource. And so in the main.tf, right after AWS security group resource, I'll add this code. I will set the type property to ingress since this is intended to be an inbound access to EC2. And then from port to two port properties are going to be the ports 8080 to 8082. I will point the source security group ID to the load balancer security group. For the security group ID property, I need to point this to the security group of my EC2 instance. So first thing I do is set this to a variable source. This is a new variable inside the load balancer Terraform module, so I have to go and define this inside variables.tl. I have not set any default value for this new variable, and so it becomes a required input for the module. So I need to go and update my Telegram configuration file for my load balancer resource. If you remember earlier, I added a new output variable from my EC2 Terraform module for the security group ID. I already have an existing dependency in this file to my EC2 module, which is right here. And so I only need to do two simple things. First is add a mock output in the dependency block for my EC2 security group ID. And then update the source of the value of the EC2 security group ID input variable. I also need to do a few cleanup tasks for this Terraform module, starting with making sure that the public DNS value of my load balancer is added as an output. And so if I go to the outputs.tf of my load balancer Terraform module, I will need to add this code. And then in the main.tf, I also need to get rid of the block that creates the Route 53 records, which is right here. Because I've deleted the Route 53 records resources, I have an unused variable. In variables.tl, I can get rid of this variable record names. And because we no longer require that as an input variable, I have to go and update the Telegram configuration file as well and get rid of the record names. The next set of changes are for my CDN Terraform module. So let me open main.tf and determine what changes I need to implement. The first thing that I need to do is update the origin block. The variable origin endpoint needs to be pointing to the DNS value of my load balancer. Let's head over to my CDN Telegram configuration file and have a look. The origin endpoint is using the EC2 public DNS value, which I got rid of. Because I need this to be coming from my load balancer, I need to replace my existing EC2 dependency with the load balancer dependency. When I updated the outputs for my load balancer Terraform module, I added an output for the load balancer DNS name. So that is what I need to plug in in this dependency. And now I can update the origin endpoint to extract the value appropriately. Now back to my CDN main.tf. My CloudFront resource will be integrating with my load balancer resource via TLS. And so I need to update the origin protocol policy to HTTPS only. For the next set of changes, I need to make sure that when my CloudFront resource forwards the request to my load balancer, the load balancer is accessed in the same manner as how an end user accesses my web applications. Generally, when someone accesses a website, for example, youtube.com, a request header field called host is passed with the request which usually points to youtube.com, which is essentially the domain that's being accessed. By default, CloudFront swallows all the header values unless you tell it otherwise. So I need to make a change to my CloudFront resource to forward the host header. And so back to my code, on the headers property inside the forwarded values block, I need to add host inside the list. Now, right at the end of this file is a resource block that creates the URL or web endpoints that will be exposed to the internet. The values set for the endpoints are derived from an input variable called aliases. So let me head to my CDN Telegram configuration file and review this input. I need to modify the set of values here to capture all my web application endpoints. Notice that I dropped the domain in the values in the list. This is because I will interpolate this list when setting up the aliases that I need to attach 
to my CloudFont resource. So let's head back to my main.tf to set this up. So if I scroll all the way up this file, I have a CloudFront property in here called aliases. This property needs to point to the fully qualified domain name of each Route 53 record that I have set. And this is where for loop comes very handy. My CDN Terraform module accepts domain name as an input variable. And so all I have to do is loop through each element of the alias and create a list that concatenates each alias and the domain name like this. And now my aliases property for my CloudFront resource is set correctly. I'm now all set to stand up my infrastructure. So I'll open my terminal and then export my AWS credentials and my Terraform workspace. And then CD to the Terragram directory and start running apply to stand up the full infrastructure stack. And I'll say yes to this prompt. Now that my infrastructure stacks are up, I'm going to switch to my browser and verify that what I have set up works. So I'll start by accessing the main endpoint. I expect this to be redirected to HTTPS automatically and that my Nginx web page loads by default. That works. And if I try to access my blogging application by adding slash ghost in this URL, it also loads my blogging application. Now let's try accessing my radar application. That works. And sonar application. That also works. So all my web applications work after the change. Now back to my diagram. I have essentially managed to stand up an infrastructure stack that is represented by this diagram in its actual form. This setup has three levels of web proxy. We have the CloudFront web proxy, the Load Balancer web proxy, and the Nginx proxy. I have removed public access to my EC2 instance, which is an added protection, and hardened the inbound access to only the Load Balancer. I also have TLS certificate installed on my Load Balancer, which enforces HTTPS access even if it's coming from my CloudFront resource. And I also have the same thing set up for my CloudFront resource with TLS certificate installed and with the same purpose, enforcing secure access to my web applications. You might think this setup is such an overkill. You are correct in some respects. However, there are a number of security and protection measures that are available only with CloudFront, like web access firewall, rate limiting capability, which is not available to the load balancer. Also, when you start setting up static websites, you can take advantage of CloudFront's caching capability to address latency on your web applications. And that's a wrap. Stay tuned as I continue to identify areas in cloud technology that we can explore together in the next series. In the meantime, let me know your thoughts in the comments below and send me some likes if you find this useful. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you like the content on this channel. Until next time, keep learning, keep safe, and I hope this year is better for everyone. See ya!